How many of you were in Monterey, California in September of 2012? So if you recall that, I was introduced at the awards breakfast. I put my 10-gallon hat on that my wife gave me, and I said, I'm going to Texas. But I also said that I was not going to put on a gun rack on the back of my car. <laughs> Never too late. So that was, 11, <laughs> that was 11 years ago, starting October 1st, which is this weekend. So as many of you know, that was a turbulent time for the USPTA. And even though the association will be going through another transition over the next few months, I can honestly say that we are in a much better place today than we were back then. I am totally at peace with my decision, and I can look in the mirror and take great satisfaction in what we've accomplished over the last decade. Let me give you a couple highlights. We have a spectacular headquarters in Lake Nona all of which you should be really proud of. It's your building. It's not ours, not mine. I just happen to sit there. But it's your building. It's for the members. It's a cutting-edge design because of its environmental sustainability and technology capabilities. There is no reason why it shouldn't last for many years to come. On August 22nd, we celebrated our sixth anniversary in that building. And if you have not visited us previously. I hope that those of you will be coming out on Thursday. You'll have a chance to come and see this building because I think you're going to be pretty impressed. And like so many members who have dropped in since it's been constructed, I think you're going to come away wowed. And if you did not know, this entire project was the vision and the hard work of my lovely wife, Dagmar. She worked with the architect on the plans. She oversaw the construction with our general contractor. She did the interior design. She furnished it with the latest and greatest product in the interior office space arena. And she created an office solution that's non peril And because of the nepotism policy that we'd established when I was hired, we couldn't pay her a dime. And she probably saved us six figures in terms of fees. And all she had to do was stay within the budget. And all I did was write the checks. So it is as much her legacy as it is mine. We're celebrating our 31st wedding anniversary next week. <laughs> And brother, as time flown by, my career certainly had its ups and downs, but we've, she has never wavered in her commitment to do whatever it has taken to allow me to do my thing. I love you so much. <laughs> Secondly, financially, we've never been stronger. We've had 10 straight years of excess revenues over expenses, and I expect the same in 2023. Prior to 2012, when I started, we had five consecutive years of loss making. That's certainly not a sustainable model. The good news is that we've established a successful investment portfolio that, given its current value, will enable us to cover one full year of operations if it is ever needed for a nonprofit association that is proper financial discipline. Thirdly, we transitioned from Houston in 2017. We basically had to build an entirely new team. Over the years, we've had a significant staff turnover, and as many of our team members have moved on to other opportunities. It has been painful for all of us to onboard those folks, to embrace them, and to bring them into our culture, and then to have them see the depart. I've certainly kept our HR team pretty busy. <laughs> but I can honestly say that the team we have in place now is absolutely fantastic. And I want to take a moment to recognize a couple of them. Alan has sat outside my office for, 50, for 11 years. She's heard everything I've said. She's heard everything I've done. And she has been a rock. And I'm so thankful for her 29 years of service. <laughs> Ray.
Ramona, you're the second longest standing. Where are you, Ramona? Second longest standing person here with us. I convinced you to come to, to Lake Nona when you weren't so excited about doing it. I'm so glad you did. You've got a trajectory in your career that's going up. So thank you so much for all you've done. And to the rest of the team, thank you for joining us when you did. You've embraced our roles with enthusiasm, and I am forever grateful. To Dan Wilson and Scott Busick for the 20 years that you've given the association, you guys have been unbelievably supportive of me and the association, which I so appreciate. So thank you guys for all the work that you've done in IT. And I, I have to recognize Fred. 24 years with the organization. He was the best wingman I could have ever had. So if you see Fred around the industry, thank him so much. <laughs> he was actually here yesterday and was great just tech checking in with. He looks fantastic and I know he's gonna do a great job in his new role. But look, anytime there's turnover at the top, it can be a cause of concern. But I am really, really confident that my replacement, whoever that's going to be, is gonna definitely take the reins and lead this organization to new heights. We have so many other positives to trumpet, there isn't enough time to go into them. But on the other side of the coin, I've gotta go ahead and talk about a couple of my disappointments, and three of which I wanna mention here. The first, and it's been said before, is our relationship with the USTA. It's uneasy at the moment, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, and I hate it. I don't like it, I wish it were different. We moved together, we moved to Lake Nona to grow the game together as two associations. We can't do it separately. I've been a lifelong member of the USTA as a, as a lifetime member. I actually was an employee of the USTA from 1980 to 1982 when we started the adult league tennis program, if you remember that. I've served on national committees for 38 years, and some of my closest industry colleagues are USTA staffers. So it's hard for me to personally reconcile where things stand at the present. But ever the optimist that I am, I'm hopeful that things can and will change in the very near future. Secondly, I've always had felt that the right thing in our industry was to have one strong, unified tennis teaching organization. I've said it publicly for years, and it should not come as any surprise to any of you. But in my opinion, a unified association will clearly raise the standards of our professionals and will be the driving force in the industry. Rising tide raises all boats. My hope is that that will come to pass at some point down the road. Thirdly, I worry about the mass exodus that's happening now and in the accelerating years with so many of our teaching professionals that are gonna be aging out. Where's the pipeline of our future professionals who are gonna join our association? Kids today don't view tennis teaching as an aspirational career. Clubs are desperate to hire professionals. The networking breakfast the other day, that was the number one topic that people were talking about. How do I find more pros? And I'm sure all of you feel the same way. Clubs are desperate to hire anyone that can keep them to meet the demand that was brought on by the pandemic. And quite frankly, they really don't care much about whether they're certified or not. Membership acquisition, engagement, and retention is the number one priority for this association in the years to come. And all of you in the trenches have to take the responsibility to find new talent and bring them into our association. National can't do it, social media can't do it, marketing can't do it, it's you folks that are on the ground. You all are gonna make the difference. So I implore you, please, get your staff to become certified. Bring people to the association. We need it. Now, there are so many people that I would like to recognize, but I'm gonna highlight the six presidents with whom I've worked so closely and whom I consider friends. Tommy Douglas. You convinced that selection committee to hire me and take a chance on me, and I'm forever thankful. And you had to endure an awful lot during your presidency. You're a rock, man, and I appreciate it so much. <laughs> Mr. McGraw, you had the perfect temperament to calm the stormy waters that the association was facing at the time that you commenced your term. 
You are a master of bringing the association together, and that's your legacy. Thank you, man. I'm trying not to, Chuck, but it's hard. You're next. <laughs> you, you guided us as we relocated from Houston to our new digs, and you gave us the latitude to build what we did. But also your stewardship during the initial accreditation process was vital. Thank you, man. You were great. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Trust, whose sense of humor and unwavering support was so appreciated during your tenure. Like all presidents, you had to deal with a few thorny matters, but that comes with the territory. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Mr. Hassan, one always knew where you stood on any issue that came up. <laughs> you are as direct as anybody, and you don't mince any words. But your vision for diversity, equality, and inclusion put us on the right track. And thank you for doing that. <laughs> and last but not least, Rich, who on a personal level has gone through an awful lot in his two years here at the helm. New job? New relocation, loss of a parent, marriage, and the, his first child, all within 18 months. And yet, despite all those major life-changing concurrences, you have navigated a ton of complex issues, not the least of which is the search process for my replacement. And I sincerely thank all of you for the tireless effort that you guys put into leading, leading this association. The almost daily phone calls that you had with me the long meetings with respective boards and ex-coms representing our association and industry gatherings are all part of the job. And until you actually sit in that role, you have no idea how all-encompassing that job is. And I so enjoyed my time that I've spent with each of you and your friends for life. <laughs> Finally, I have three core values that were instilled in me very early as a young boy. And I've tried to live them each and every day. Honor, integrity, and civility. It's been an honor, a true honor for me to serve this association and this membership. And I've tried to conduct myself honorably as I would never want anyone in this association to question my behavior in this role. Secondly, integrity. I've always been truthful staunchly committed to doing the right thing, and I always put the association first. It was never about me. Thirdly, civility. Always treating people with dignity and respect. Everyone deserves to be dealt with fairly and to have their voice heard. I've made a concerted effort to return phone calls and on a timely basis respond to emails almost immediately. I'm keenly aware that I serve our membership and communicating with everyone is just part of being a servant leader. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to work for you. I have so enjoyed this experience and I value so much the relationships that I've developed over the years. It has been one of the most gratifying experiences I've had in my long career. I will follow your progress from a distance, although we're still gonna be residents of Lake Nona. Thank you all very much. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you.